There are many, many prophecies that are over us right now, over this district, over our church, over our lives. It's been spoken to us of unprecedented revival. And there are prophecies and promises that God has given to us. Now, I've discovered down through the years that with the prophecy and with the promise, there always seems to be some kind of a condition that goes along with it. And it's kind of like, if you will, I will type of thing. And I, I, I really don't have a problem with God. I, I don't think God is a liar. If there's one thing that God cannot do, that is lie. And his promises are yea and amen. And he gives us a word and he gives us a promise. He, he has allowed a, a prophecy to be given through the prophets of God. And as sure as shooting, you can believe and trust the, promise, the promises and the prophecies of the Lord. It may take some time and uh, he will show us different things and uh, it may take some time, but you rest assured that it will take place just like he said that it would. In Second Chronicles, it says, If I shut up heaven that there, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send a pestilence among the people, if my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. And now mine eyes shall be opened, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. There again, there's a promise. And if we take this Second Chronicles 7 way back in Old Testament times, right? And now, of course, none of those principles and, you know, none of those, uh, you know, the concepts and stuff are really that, you know, they're not really that uh, relevant, are they? Well, really, they are. And uh, the principles of God, he does not change. And so you see those principles in, as they go from the Old right into the New Testament. Of those that prayed, sought the face of God, and God moved in a very, very powerful way. And so I believe that this particular promise is still something for us today. And it still requires of us that we humble ourselves and we turn from wickedness. And we pray and seek the face of God. And that we be a child of God. If my people which are called by my name. Jesus is letting us know it's not for the, the sinners of the, of the community to do these things. It's for us as the church to do these things. If we're really wanting to see the healing of the land, then we need to buckle down and take this seriously. We need to allow it to be a part of our life. And, and um, it, it's going to... It's going to cause us, it's going to, it's going to, to make a sacrifice. And uh, there's, there's just different mess, messages or methods of, uh, of sacrifice. There's di different depths of, of sacrifice that, that we'll make. And some of those are easy to do, you know, it's, it's easy. Uh, now, I'm not going to try to step on anybody's toes here at the moment, but I just want to talk to us for a minute or two, and I, I'm, I'm going into my, my study time here and all of that, and, and I won't keep you forever or anything like that, but, you know, there are some things that's, that's kind of easy to do because it doesn't really get to our place where that we are being that, that affected by it, you know, um, it, it's really not too awfully hard to write a check just as long as you have some money to back it up, right? And I encourage you that if you do that, you have the money to back it up. And, uh, but there are other things that, that kind of cause us uh, to, to dig down a little bit deeper. You could sponsor somebody to do, uh, oh, the Muddy Manor. Are they doing the Muddy Manor anymore? They are, actually. Uh, it's much easier to sponsor somebody to do it right than to do it yourself. I can assure you of that. Um, there are some things that kind of cost us a little bit more. And David spoke about it, and he said, you know what? Um, I'm going to give a sacrifice, and, and uh, a runner said, no, I'm not, that's not going to happen. I, I'm going to give it to you. And they said, no, that's not going to happen. I, I'm not going to try to give something that doesn't cost me something. 
And uh, so he bought it, purchased the, the land, and, and, and gave it as a sacrifice. So I, I just say that there are certain things that we're never, ever going to see until we decide that we're going to pay the price that it takes to see those things. And I'm not into, you know, trying to twist God's arm and, and trying to, you know, just demand from him. But to take the instruction that the, the Bible gives to us to see these things happen in our life. And our land needs to be healed, desperately needs healing. When we're seeing the different things that we are seeing and the confusion that's in our world today, some of the things that I could never, ever imagine as a school-aged uh, person seeing in school the different things that they're seeing and hearing in our schools today. They're, they're seeing these things and, and, and so, so much confusion that they don't even know if they're a person or not. And if they are a person, they don't know for sure what, you know, if they're a male or a female. Uh, it, you know, really, it doesn't take a whole lot to figure that all out, uh, you know. But there's so much confusion uh, in our world and, and people in high places yeah. that are speaking for such things. And it's just confusion. And we know who the author of confusion is. It's not God, I can tell you. So there are some basic things that in our world that need to be straightened out, need to be straightened out. And can we make an impact? Can, can we do something about what is going on in our world today? Can we do something about what is being put into our young people and children? I believe that we can. And it goes beyond, it goes beyond just us being good people because we need weapons that are not carnal. We need weapons that are, not, that are spiritual weapons because the battles that we're fighting are not just carnal they're 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 spiritual battles and these things are are spirits that are moving through our our land and i'm not saying this to, to freak you out or creep you out or something like that and ghosts and goblins and demons and devils and all that but if you read your bible you are soon to understand the reality of the spirit world but while we understand the reality of the spirit world I, I, I kind of chuckle because one of the uh, <clears throat> parents, uh, last week we had Crusaders Camp, 26 of them received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And of course, on the question, questionnaire for the application, it asks, have you received the Holy Ghost? And one of the parents said, I don't know, was there some kind of a ghost up there on the campground or something? Asked her husband about it. Is there some kind of ghost up there? What's going on? What's that all about? Well, she did not understand about the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and, and all of that. Uh, but you know what? The, the power of the Holy Ghost is Christ in us, and it's working in and through us. And, and we, we need this, this spirit, this power working in us if we're going to survive the onslaught of an enemy that is working in spiritual dimensions. And so the power that comes to us from Jesus Christ comes through his spirit in us, and he gives us all of the power over the enemy, Right? So our weapons are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So while we see the principalities and powers at work in our world today, we can sit idly by and allow them to have their dominion, or we can retaliate. <laughs> we can come against these things in the name of Jesus. Not carnally, but spiritually, we can come against these things. How can these things happen? We pray and we fast and we seek the face of God and we see the victory that comes by these things. Now, sometimes, boys, I don't know what I'm getting on here today because this has nothing to do with what I've had uh, prepared. I just wrote this scripture down before I came today. But there are some things that um, we say that we can't do when in reality we can, but we don't want to. Um, one of the most difficult things for us to do is to attend a prayer meeting, Right? What's the least attended meeting of a church will be a prayer meeting. It's difficult. And then when you come into the prayer meeting, everybody's stone cold quiet. And uh, that's, I'm glad you're here and all of that. Please don't, don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, when we begin to pray and seek the face of God, and I'm all for that, that prayer that you pray that's between you and God, but I'm also for the prayer that's, uh, you know, kind of loud and, and maybe others even here too. And so I'm not discounting either one, but we need to pray. And yet prayer is the least most attended meeting. And uh, now when we come into church 
and here we are today, and we begin to sing. And I could have uh, Brother John come back up here and, and start playing again, and, and all of a sudden those notes and, and the melody of, of a particular chorus, even before, even before it uh, is, is uh, verbally expressed, before we vocalize that particular chorus that we begin to, are going to sing. You, you, you've heard it before. You, you, you begin to feel those words of that particular song. And before you know it, uh, just even by, the, just, just by the, the, the music alone, your hands begin to go up. Have me come up here and, and just begin to play Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Don't even have to sing it anymore because we just feel that. And we feel those words and we lift up our hands and we feel the presence and the power of God. It's not really that difficult for us to get into a frame of praise and worship unto God. And we can praise and worship our way through some situations and problems that we're dealing with in our life. Young men, let me just tell you, there'll be some things that you'll face in this life that your worship is not going to get you through. Yeah, that's right. Your shout's not going to get you through it. It's, oh, come on now. Come on now, Pastor. We've got that shout and worship and dance thing down, and I, I like to do it myself. Even at 62, I can do a little bit. Not as much as I used to, but I can, uh, you know, I can still get around a little bit every now and again. But you know what? And, and I've worshipped my way through some problems and situations, but I have done that. And I've praised my way through, you know. Worship is the way that the battle is won, you know. Gone, guns and bombs, that's, no, that's not the way it's done. We, we worship and we magnify the Lord, and sometimes that works. But then there are other times it doesn't work. You look at your neighbor and you just say, it doesn't work sometimes. You know, I've shouted my, my hair down, and, and I've danced my bobby pins out, and, you know, I, I've even taken my shoes off because, because it was holy ground, not because they were uncomfortable. I'll, I'll give you the... <laughs> Boy, now I'm getting a little facetious. <laughs> but done all those things, and it just didn't work. And, and you know, the thing is, it's like we come to church like, like right now, and, and here we are today, and unless you're, you're sneaking some food into the sanctuary, you're fasting, right? Now, unless you bought, brought your peanut butter sandwich and your, you know, your Oreos or whatever, and you're sneaking them in, knowing that you're not supposed to have food in the sanctuary, right? Uh, let's might as well reiterate a rule while, while, we're, while, while we're going at it here. Um, but, but, you know, we're fasting here today, Right? And, oh, man, yesterday I had one of the greatest burgers. My wife is a fabulous cook. I don't know who grilled. Probably Johnny grilled, though. It was awesome. That was just... Anyway, uh, I digress. And, but here we are today, and, and we're not eating. But, but fasting is something that goes beyond what we do in this auditorium because we're only here for, what, an hour and a half or two hours. depends on, you know, how things go and, and all of that. But fasting goes beyond the sanctuary. And that's really some of the power that's in fasting. It goes beyond just being in church. It goes beyond just worshiping, you know, because we like to lift our hands and we like to cry and we like to shout. And we like the music and all of that. But fasting takes you beyond the music. All right? It takes you beyond it. It takes you beyond uh, being there with your with your brothers and sisters worshiping the Lord together where it's so nice and easy and comfortable. You know, fasting takes you driving down the road going past the McDonald's and past the Burger King and, and past, you know, the Longhorn, past all of these places. It takes you past those things. It even, it even takes you past the situations where your friend who never even ever pays much attention to you all of a sudden comes up to you with one of the biggest juiciest pieces of pizza and he looks at you and says I don't really want this would you like to have it you know uh, and, you, and you're fasting right because you're getting rid of that food and you're dying to yourself it goes way beyond the sanctuary then don't we want the revival that God has given to us to go way beyond the sanctuary yeah. and 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 it goes way beyond medicine it does goes way beyond medicine you see you know the doctors couldn't do it she spent all she had she spent all she had 
Don't tell me that that dad didn't try to do everything he possibly could. That that boy would not fall into the fire and fall into the water. Don't, don't tell me he didn't spend all he possibly could because it would have been worth it to him. I believe it would have been worth it to him to, to spend that year's wages in worship if it got, gave my son the healing that he needed. So I, I'm just kind of, maybe, maybe I, I'm just kind of over-imagining things a little bit, but I'm thinking about the heart of the father and what he would do to see his son to be able to, to be healed. And, and then he took him to church and and he, and he not only just went to a, a believer that happened to see some things that had taken place, you know, the miracles. that it, they, He took him right to the top. He took him right there to the disciples and said, hey, this is, this is difficult and this is bad and this is a tough situation. And they tried. Yeah. They tried. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. I, I don't know if they shouted loud. Maybe. And sometimes it seems like they, if you really shout loud... It works. And then there's other times, no matter how loud you shout, it, doesn't, it just doesn't work. All right? And maybe, maybe, John, switch it up up there, bub. It's not happening. Tell him to do a different song. Get a lot faster one. Faster, 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 faster. Drums are beating. Praise singers are spring, uh, singing their hearts out. Nah, it's still not working. No. Try a slower one. So we shift gears right down to number one, and boom, everybody gets whip, whiplash, and now we're fighting, trying something, and it still doesn't work. Sometimes it just doesn't break. Some of these things are never, ever going to happen until the church and the ministry gets a hold of the prayer and fasting that Jesus was talking about when his disciples asked the question and said, you know what? Why could we not cast him out? And I hear all kinds of excuses from the ministry right on down. Because I've been on this journey over a year or so now, but I like to ask questions and find out where people are at and what's going on in their life. And so a visiting preacher comes along. I say, hey, what do you guys do in your district? <laughs> Just get ready. Um, you know, how many meetings do you have? Yeah. What's going on in your church? You know, and, and all these different things. You try to find out what's taking place. And you want to know what's going on. You see in the revival that you really want to see, when we say we're seeing the revival and outpouring, but are we seeing it in the dimension that we truly want to see it now, I'm just going to be very open to you. Natalie comes to our church. And I've prayed. I know, Brother Kennedy, you prayed. Casey. And we prayed that God would heal these people. And, when, and one day they will be. They will be whole. One, there's no doubt in my mind. But I'd like to see a little bit of heaven down here. And I'm praying and I'm believing God. You talk about something that would shake the state of Maine, and probably shake the nation, is to see someone like Natalie to be healed. You talk about putting a smile on our faces. <laughs> would it not? Stephanie, wouldn't it put a big old smile on your face? It's a big one there now, but you know what I'm saying? I, I want to do whatever God wants me to do and make it so that if it's just the will of God that they go through this life and on the day that uh, eternity begins for them that they're transformed, renewed, and, and, and all, all sickness and everything is gone, then so be it. But I don't want it to be something like, well, these kind only come out by prayer and fasting. And that what is going on in that person's life and, and while they may hear the diagnosis of a doctor and the recommendation of a doctor and the doctor say to us, well, let's try this. And we're so eager to just go ahead and say, oh, yeah, let's try this. 
Let's, let's try this, and maybe that will work. Could we try this? Could, could we try the, the intercessory prayer and fasting? Could we try that? Well, let's, let's have a, now I'm not trying to be facetious, but let's have another, let's have another bake sale. Let's have another, you know, let's have another gospel singing. Let's have a, you know, let's have another friend day. Let's have another this or another that. And I'm all for those things. Don't get me wrong. But while we're trying that, can we try this? Whether we truly get serious about what is going on in our life and in our families. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. I can't. I can't. I, I, can, I just can't do this. Then find someone that you can join together with that can. And allow them to be your, your compadre in the situation that you are facing. And if two or three agree, let's get into some agreement. Let's look at that individual and say, I struggle with this prayer and fasting thing. And so if you will pray and fast with me, then let's see what God will do. Most likely, as you take that small step and God takes the two steps, and God comes closer to you, and as you join together, doing what you possibly can to, to get into the place where that God can truly bless and use you, then maybe that healing, that, uh, that uh, oppression that you're facing will go away, and, and that healing will come, and the miracle will take place. And the world will be astonished because it wouldn't be the first time that the world has been astonished about what Jesus has done. And not that we glory in ourselves and try to, to take any of the glory from, from God or that we, we try to you know, take any of the credit for ourselves. We just give ourselves to the Lord and we want to see what God will do. What will God do when we earnestly pray and seek his face and see what, uh, uh, you know, what those promises in their fulfillment would be to us if we would truly pray and fast and seek the face of God? And so I'm, I'm, I'm on this journey and I pray for the help of God to to make it stronger. Trust me, when, when you decide that you're going to push the food away, some changes will take place inside of you. Some things that you may not even have known were there. Let me tell you that inside of you, there is a love. There is a love for things that you don't normally love. What do you mean? Well, let me just say this. When you get to three or four days of fasting, those lima beans don't look near as bad as what they used to. Matter of fact, they look and smell pretty good. Some of the things that you wouldn't normally be attracted to, all of a sudden, did those things change? No. No. And when, you know, after I eat a, a Big Mac, I'm not looking for lima beans, trust me. But after some days... Lima beans are not so bad after all. You say, I don't want to be around that person. But that's your brother or sister in the Lord. But I don't like them. Go ahead and pray and fast a little bit. And you'll find a love for some things that you didn't love. Because there will be some things revealed inside of you that you didn't even know were there. 
I just want you to know that there's no love in my heart for you. <laughs> Pray and fast. Dig down deep in there and you'll discover some things in your heart that you never, ever expected would be there. Some good things. Some good things that have just been covered up. It's just been covered up with all the junk that this world has. You know, it's the cares of life that have been piling up inside of you. And, you. and you're racing here and you're racing there and you're wondering about this and you're wondering about that. And you don't, and I don't have time for you. Well, I don't have time for you because all of my time is going for, for something else. But if I extract some of those things that are taking my time, before you know it, I do have time to talk to you. You're not such a bad guy after all. There's some things you want to see. There's some things I want to see. But Jesus straightforwardly stand. But Johnny, come on up. And I lesson goes to something else today. Um, is there something you want to see in your life? We can, we, can, we can worship here today, and we're going to. We're going to worship for the next few minutes, and then we're going to take a break. But, and, and then we're going to start again with our worship service. Um, but maybe, maybe God could just deal with your heart, and maybe tomorrow start something in you that that literally transform your life through a prayer, through fasting. Maybe you can't go a week, but maybe you can go two two days or a day. Start out with the start out with a day. I've I've talked with preachers lately that struggle with just one day. Just one day. Pastor, Brother Channel, you're so, you're just narrow minded. And I, and I thank God. I thank God today that I can do this. I can do this. Because some people are believing that they can't. And maybe some of them can't, but a lot of times I think we get an excuse and we won't. But from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, from sunrise until sunset can be a day of fasting. But what about lunchtime? <laughs> if you have to, get up before sunrise and eat your breakfast. But start somewhere. Start somewhere. Go from that point until the going down of the same and sunset is that, you know, you'll be thankful it's winter time. All right. <laughs> oh boy. Sometimes it's good to have fun in church. Is that all right? This has been totally off the cuff and winging it here this morning. I don't know. But there's something in my heart that says, I just want to see an outpouring of God's Spirit. Let's just start with that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. And let's start fasting. And let's start praying and seeking the face of God. You can do this. We can do this. We can see revival and outpouring in our church and in our district. We can see some of those miracles that are sitting right here today. I believe that. I believe that. And it's what I desire to see. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and just sing that one, one time through. And just lift up your hands and make a commitment to God and ask God to help you here today. I love you, Jesus. I love you, God. Help us, Lord. All my life you have
light at the end of that tunnel. Hallelujah. All I see a rainbow. You have been so I promise you, God. Hallelujah. The end. The end of your situation. God bless you for being in the adult Sunday school class. God bless you today. We'll take a break here and we'll resume 11 o'clock or so. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Thank you.